As the number of coronavirus infections and deaths continues to rise in the United States, several states are taking action to prevent infections. We get more from AP's Ed Donahue. In New York, restaurants, bars, and gyms will have to close by 10 p.m. No private gatherings of more than 10 people. In Indiana... We are in the midst of a second surge. Governor Eric Holcomb is bringing back some restrictions that limit crowd sizes and extends a mask mandate. Unfortunately, too many of us and around the country have let our guards down and either assumed we won't get it or if we do, so be it. In Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Mayor Paul Tenhaken said no to a mask mandate. I believe the small uptick in compliance we'll see, we see from this or we will see are not worth the community division that this will create. Violators would have been fined $50. I'm Ed Donahue. Britain has become the fifth country worldwide to record more than 50,000 deaths from COVID-19. The British government reported more than 50,300 people have died from the disease. That means Britain joins the United States, Brazil, India, and Mexico in reporting more than 50,000 deaths. The news follows reports earlier this week that a vaccine had performed well in clinical trials. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said even with the hope of a vaccine, people still need to follow safety protocols. We're not out of the woods yet. Uh, it does still require everybody to follow the guidance, uh, do the, the right thing to suppress the disease in the way that we all understand. Britain is currently experiencing a resurgence of the virus and has imposed new restrictions to help curb infections. Non-essential places such as pubs, restaurants, hairdressers, gyms, golf courses and theaters must remain closed until December 2nd. German pharmaceutical company BioNTech says it could start shipping the first coronavirus vaccines ordered by the European Union within weeks. AP's Charles de la Desma reports. BioNTech, which is developing the vaccine together with U.S. company Pfizer, says deliveries are anticipated to start by the end of 2020, subject to clinical success and regulatory authorization. BioNTech adds the vaccine supply for the EU is being manufactured at its site in Germany and Pfizer's plant in Belgium. And based on current projections, the companies expect to produce globally up to 1.3 billion doses in 2021. I'm Charles de la Desma. President Donald Trump and President-elect Joe Biden have both marked Veterans Day. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani reports. At Arlington National Cemetery, Present! Present! Oh! the president was at the Tomb of the Unknowns, saluting in a soaking rain. He did not speak at the annual observance and has not made any remarks in nearly a week while refusing to concede the election to Biden. Oh! The president-elect visited the Korean War Memorial in Philadelphia, where he greeted some families. He's been taking a measured tone while forming plans for his administration, looking to lower the national temperature as President Trump refuses to concede. The president today again claimed on Twitter he actually won, raising new and unsupported claims of corruption and dishonesty and saying the race was stolen from him. Sagar Magani, Washington. Georgia election officials have announced an audit of presidential election results that will trigger a full hand recount. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger said at a news conference Wednesday that his office wants the process to begin by the end of the week and expects it to take until November 20th. With the margin being so close, it will require a full by hand recount in each county. This will help build confidence. It will be an audit, a recount, and a recanvas all at once. After results from the hand recount are certified, the losing campaign can request another recount, which will be performed by machine. President-elect Joe Biden leads President Donald Trump by about 14,000 votes out of nearly 5 million counted in the state. Hurricane Eta weakened to a tropical storm even as it continues to threaten the Gulf Coast of Florida. The storm has been in the Gulf of Mexico since crossing over South Florida on Sunday. The Tampa Bay region is home to more than three and one half million people across five counties.